first question is from Nitin McKinley. What are the effects of low-carb diets on hormones? Oh, this is a good question. Um, now, if a low-carb diet improves your health, oftentimes it'll balance out your hormones in, in better ways, right? Poor health leads to hormone imbalances. And then the, the hormone imbalances also lead to worse health. So it's kind of like it, it keeps getting worse. Mm -hmm. Good health typically leads to better, more balanced hormones. Okay, now that being said, let's say the low-carb diet has nothing to do with improving your health. You're just doing it because you're trying to get leaner, you think it might get you leaner faster, or you want to try this new diet, and you're just pushing it and you're ignoring your body's signals. Here's what it can actually do for you. In men, really low diets for long periods of time can cause lower levels of oh, testosterone. testosterone. Yep. In women, sometimes you see thyroid issues from really, really low levels of carbohydrates over long periods of time. And I think that's because the low diets for them started to produce worse health. And then the side effect of that was hormones. So that's that's an example. Just talking about low diet, low calories and carbs. I I would actually make the case though, and wouldn't you agree that uh, a low fat or a low protein diet is even more risky for hormonal issues? Well, fat and protein is essential. essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah because right. they're essential. So yeah, I mean, yes, a low carb diet can cause hormonal issues. Any low calorie diet for a long period of time. I don't care what it is. Like being here's the thing. Here's I remember I read some a study a long time ago that talked about like you know, the uh, average female, what she what she gains weight on today, and then what the average female would need to actually hit the nutri uh, nutrient levels on a daily basis. And it's like completely lopsided. Like you, the average female gain, and this is, a, a, don't quote me on this because I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's somewhere around here, right? Mm. The average female gains weight, I think, on like 1,800 or 1,900 calories, something like that. Mm. And, the, and the average female, in order to hit all of her macronutrient targets needs like 2000. So if you if you gain weight on that and you're trying to lose weight and you're running a 1300 to 1500 calorie diet for a long period of time. Now mind you there's all kinds of variables, your your age, your weight, your muscle mass. So I'm giving generic numbers to get my point across. But if you are running in a in a low calorie diet for an extended period of time, you're it, there's a very good chance that you're not hitting your RDA for a lot of different nutrients, and over a period of time, that will affect health, which then in turn can affect hormones. And yes, so yes, low carb can do that, but also you know low fat or uh, low protein, you're at risk of that too. In my mm -hmm. experience, I've so helped people solve hormone issues with there's a, a lot of things that we would do. But I've had more success by raising people's fat intake uh, and cutting their carbs in the reverse. So Me too. I, I've only ever – I'm trying to think throughout my whole career. Off the top of my head, I can think of two people that were following low carb for too long that we had to bump their carbs a little bit and then their hormones balanced out. But the vast majority were the opposite. The vast majority, I looked at their, their diet and we said, we need to increase your healthy yeah. fats. We need to increase your proteins, and then they had better outcomes. Like I actually had a guy whose testosterone levels, uh, like went up thirty percent or something like that by mm -hmm. by cutting his carbs a little bit and raising his fat. Well, when uh, intermittent fasting kind of made its way back to the scene, I had uh, issues with this actually with a few clients because it it became sort of an addiction to where they would stay so low calorie more than anything like not obviously low carbohydrate but overall low calories you know at the end of the week to where it would start affecting all these these visible signs in their skin their uh you know their performance in the gym uh they looked a bit gaunt like there was just like a lot of physical symptoms and signs that were very visible uh to me with that and so that was just something that i noticed because it was being promoted so hard that this is the healthy way uh to diet right now and so they wanted to stay within that as long as they possibly could. So I had to address that a few times. Yeah, I think anything that, I mean, here's the key takeaway here. Anything that is reducing your overall health will probably cause hormone issues. So really doesn't matter what diet it is. If the diet itself is not making, is it making your health worse? And usually this happens because people ignore the signals that their body's telling them and they stick to a diet because They've been convinced that this is the solution to all their problems, mm -hmm. either because they keep reading about it or some Instagram you know, influencer tells them this is the way you need to eat. And so they're ignoring the fact that their hair is falling out, that their nails are more brittle, brittle that their sleep is off, that their 
digestion is off and oh no, but the but I read that this is the way to do no, it. This, this is, is the di- healthy way. This is the detox period. I hate it when I hear that, right? Oh, yeah. I feel like garbage, but it's because I'm detoxing. That's the reason why I'm doing this. Like, oh, your hair falling out is not really a sign of detoxing. I think you're nutrient deficient. You know what I mean? Yeah. If your health declines, then you are going to notice uh, hor- negative hormone effects. 